welcome to pure experiences online satsang this satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual matters you can ask your questions and get your doubts cleared and we also do the works related to the path of knowledge program here like exams and all so we are going to start with an exam today which is of uh, paramjit so i would like to know whether paramjit is present and are you ready for the test today pranam gurudeva mahaji sorry okay Hello. you will get yeah. 10 questions and uh, you will need to score at least 50% or more to continue to the step number 4 of the program meanwhile everybody should simply listen do not try to answer the questions we'll discuss the answers later on so these are your questions read carefully take your time all the best all right my first question is mention five advantages and five disadvantages of the path of knowledge five advantages is there are many advantages but the removal of ignorance bliss pure happiness freedom from all the sorrows there are no disadvantages in the, in the path of knowledge there is none but there are many advantages like freedom bliss ignorance removal free from sufferings free from anger free from uh, 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 all worldly problems question number 2 which qualities are desired but not absolutely necessary for a seeker the qualities desired intense desire for knowledge intense desire for freedom curiosity skeptical uh, faith to the uh, program open minded and the necess but are not absolutely necessary for seeker no practices no rituals not be need to attach to someone uh, no strict uh, practices needed number 3 what is truth can there be subjective truth we categorize the truth in uh, path of knowledge in uh, two categories like true or false the truth is uh, arbitrary it changes from person to person and the subjective truth is it changes from person to person everybody have their own truth uh seeker use relative truth for uh, uh that's it the truth is that's the truth the truth and we use the truth for to know uh, on the path of knowledge for the truth which is never changes and false is just changes what never changes that's the that's what the essence the nature of us of all the objects never changes experiencer never changes nature never changes why is existence empty that's the nature of the existence nature of the existence is emptiness it appears empty but is full of potential is full of existence all that which, which is perceived unperceived it has this universe many universes it has past present future physical non physical metaphysical mental non mental it has truth it has false in it it is dream like you can stuff any name it has in it but is all the potential it is not what is looks like but it is there number 6 is my essence is changing unchanging why are there changes in me such as old is happiness suffering thoughts extra my essence is unchanging my essence is my experience my nature why are the changing because my body my happiness my suffering my thought my emotions 
those are all experiences and experience are changing those are false so they will be changing when will the experience stop experience has no beginning and no end it's non temporal infinite non local everywhere it will never stop what can be known about the illusion simply by observation we know the experiences experiences by the observing through our senses senses show us what is it the illusion but there is nothing to know in the illusion is all illusion all we know is the negative knowledge in the illusion <clears throat> which experience proves that there is only vibration all experiences are composed of vibrations vibrations are simple binary change and and which can be present by yeah why why observation <clears throat> which experience proves that there is only vibration because the change vibration is a change and all the experience are changes so that's what we know the experience proves that there is vibration vibration is the theory uh, model we have we have come up with in the path of knowledge which memory is most limited and which memory is biggest the memory is a, a illusion it is not bigger it's not small they are all same but if we go by smaller memory or bigger memory the local memory is a smaller group of memories bigger than that and the greater memory the biggest than them but they are all in the universal memory and the memory stage in the np and m uh, structure uh, guru ji i did my best i know my communication skills are uh, need to be uh, cultivated so thank you for everything thank you everybody okay thank you you get 5.5 marks out of 10 which is satisfactory but you can do better but anyway you are pass and you get uh, entry into the step number 4 of the program now it is a little bit on the borderline and some of the answers were not so detailed but still you have the basic knowledge so you can do the experiments of the waking state in the step number 4 so now we are going to discuss these questions in short very very brief answers will be given to those questions that are that were wrong so i think half of the questions half of the answers were wrong but uh, the basics yes they were good answers clear answers so my suggestion will be to sharpen the, these abilities more try to meditate more contemplate more on the teachings and you will come to know the mistakes as we proceed so number 1 was mentioned five advantages and five disadvantages of the path of knowledge so he very correctly told the advantages but he said there are no disadvantages because this is very subjective question you know everybody will have their own opinions about the path of knowledge we can say that there can be some disadvantages from the point of view of some seekers for example path of knowledge has the dis- disadvantage that it requires high level of intelligence it is not for common people and then it requires a lot of study writing skills communication skills so on it requires nowadays we don't require it but still we require some knowledge of sanskrit or old texts so like this we can uh, find out some disadvantages of the path of knowledge and there are no practices here there is no self cultivation here like this people can find out some problems in the path of knowledge but if you do not see any problems here no disadvantages then also it is okay because it will be very very subjective for many people there are only disadvantages here 
because it does not give you any powers any strange experiences anything that can fulfill your desires nothing is achieved here like this these qualities characteristics of the path of knowledge can be viewed as a disadvantage by many people who are not ready for this path so number 2 which qualities are desired but are not absolutely necessary for a seeker you already know the qualities that are necessary for the seeker you know the first is intense desire for liberation from the ignorance and curiosity to know open mindedness and all these things are necessary then there comes a long list of qualities which are preferable desirable but some of them can be absent in the seeker things like uh, ability to collect the essence of the lecture in few lines because that can be learned you don't need to have it ready made in you critical thinking if there is a little bit of physical illness it's okay it's not absolutely necessary to be an athlete to get trained in on the path of knowledge you can have a normal body but that is not the case for other paths for example the yogic paths and all where you need a very fit body so like this we can find out some qualities that are not absolutely necessary that can be cultivated with uh, time as you progress on the path you will get these qualities by the way he got no marks in this question he says his answer what was not good enough and third is the same he did not answer it properly which is what is truth can there be subjective truth so probably i could not hear but that was not a complete answer so what is truth according to our definition it is the classification of experiences and that is truth why do we need to classify them in order to act that's all this definition has been given we start from here and we find out that all the experiences get classified as false and only the experience remains which is truth and the second part of the question was can there be subjective truth and uh, yes all the truths are subjective only it is subjective and arbitrary classification depending on the need necessity and we knowingly choose a criteria which takes us to the ultimate we do not choose anything which is smaller we do not compromise here when it comes to the choice of criteria for truth so unchanging is truth yes number 4 was what never changes and he answered it very correctly number 5 why is existence empty and again no marks so i want to ask this question in the meeting if anybody wants to answer this thing why is existence empty why it is not full any guesses remember this is a trick question the question itself is wrong sanjay is saying it lacks substance very good answer but this is the why question you see you can again ask the why why it lacks substance why is there a lack of substance in the existence simply telling the definition of emptiness is not going to answer the question you need a reason the why question means you need a reason lack of substance means you are answering the what question what is emptiness madhuri is saying there is emptiness only there is no reason that is a very good answer crescent is saying because rest is maya or illusion you no know, the existence has everything you know there is no such thing like existence on the one side and the rest on the other side the illusion is the existence satya is saying existence has no attributes there is no thing it is just a life presence why shreya shri is saying if there is something that becomes experience there is no reason there is no reason yes that is the right answer you see when we analyze the existence experience experiencer will never find a reason because reason is something which is man made which means it is assumed in existence there are no reasons for anything then the little intellect of the humans because it can see some reasons in its everyday life which are actually connected to survival only it tries to project impose a reason on the whole existence so why is it empty why it is why is it like that why is it you know wants to know the reason but it is an impossibility to find a reason you see existence is what it is experience and the experiencer now you try to find the 
reasons for these two phases of the existence and you will never find it. Reason also means the cause. The why also points to the cause. And when we say why is existence empty, we are actually asking what is the cause of emptiness in the existence? That can be one meaning of this question. What caused emptiness in this whole existence? And as you know, there are no causes in the existence. The cause is simply an invention of the mind. It is an illusion. All causes are illusory. There can be an infinite series of causes. If I tell you one cause, you can always ask, what is the cause of that? And there will be an infinite series of causes, which is totally illogical. If existence were yellow, you could ask, why is it yellow? And I could have answered, you know, something silly. But then you can again ask, why is it like this? What is the reason for the reason? So ultimately, existence simply is. Emptiness is existence. Existence is emptiness. There is no why. It is just like saying, why is circle round? Now round is circle and circle is round. There is no why here. That is what it is. You should be very careful about the play of words here. When we say emptiness, we are actually pointing to the existence, not a quality of the existence. The existence has no qualities at all, devoid of qualities. So those who think that the emptiness is a quality in the existence, no, substanceless equal to existence. It's not a quality. Okay, hopefully <laughs> everybody is satisfied with this answer. So we go forward. Number six, his answer was correct. Whatever changes is simply not me. This is a question that is asked by newcomers. If you told me that I am unchanging, but look, so many things are changing in me. That means the self-realization has not happened at all. The self-realization is simply ability to distinguish between what is changing and what is unchanging. As simple as that. Check what is changing, check what is not changing. And that happens. Self-knowledge happens. So if it does not happen, then there will be confusion. Look. This is me and I am changing and that this question brings out this kind of ignorance but Paramjit got it right. Number 7. When will the experience stop? So his answer was again right. Experience is timeless. The time is an experience. And number 8. What can be known about the illusion simply by observation? That answer was wrong. He probably said nothing can be known. We are at a relative level here and the word knows, known, points to whatever can be learnt by simple observation of the our experience. So there is a big chapter about it in, in your program. Probably he forgot that chapter. So what can be known? First thing, the illusion is always changing, continuous flow. The illusion is uh, emptiness, it has no substance behind it, it is not made up of something. Then the illusion is cyclic, it changes in cycles, then it is fractal, self-similar, self-organizing. See, there are many things which you can learn simply by looking at any experience. So the whole list is given in the program. Number 9, which experience proves that there is only vibration and he was right, although his little bit got confused in the beginning but later he said all the experiences simply show the vibration yes not which experience all experiences simply prove the presence of vibration and those who cannot understand me probably they are not in the program or you can take it as your homework number 10 which memory is most limited and which one is the biggest so although paramjit was right he got full marks i want to ask this question in the meeting there is no right answer, no wrong answer for this. Is it even possible to know which one is the biggest? We have invented some names, you know, universal memory and all that. Do we really know? And which is most limited? He said local memory. But you see, local memory for a human is uh, different than a local memory for an insect. So what is the correct answer according to people here? Anybody wants to answer? Which memory can be taken as most limited? And which one is... Probably unlimited, not the biggest. Riddhi has answered, local memory is limited, universal memory is biggest. Which is exactly the answer given by Paramjit. I think that is also mentioned in the program somewhere. We start from the local memory, any other guesses. Because just like I said, it does not have any proper answer. Guesswork only. There are one or two 
criteria for deciding the limitedness or freedom of a memory area. You see, when we say local memory, we are pointing to an area in the memory. So there can be one criteria which is not mentioned in the program actually that we can use the criterion of freedom to label which one is uh, limited, which one is biggest. Because limited means lack of freedom, isn't it? We are not simply talking about the size. That memory area which has most rules, is most rule bound, will be limited. And a memory area which is which uh, hardly has any rules will be more free. But the word used here is biggest. So, you know, it can be confusing. Rajit is saying waking state is limited. I mean, we are not talking about states. We are talking about memories. State is something different from the memory. So, you can say that, you see, the rule bound areas are limited. Whatever is their size, that can be one answer. Because, you see, memory has no size, really. When we say universal memory is the biggest, what are we saying, really? We are saying it has more potential. Can we measure the memory areas in square meter, square kilometer? No, <laughs> it is, it is um, non-spatial, non-temporal also, NPNM. Keshav is saying NPNM memory is a model to explain the structure of illusion. It is only perceived to be limited to create meaningful experience for humans. Very good. He went one step deeper. That look, the limitation is also an illusion. He is saying like this. That has the advantage that the experience will be meaningful. That is exactly correct answer, you see. So, it depends on what criterion is used to find out the limitations. Sky is saying memory could be just existence's possibilities that were in our awareness. Mixture of words. If you do not know the definition of memory, probably you won't be able to answer it. Where do we define all these terms? Memory, existence, possibility, awareness. Where are they defined? In the program. So you will not understand what we are saying here. What is being discussed? You will not understand if you are not in the program. So these words do not have the common dictionary meanings. They are exactly defined on the path of knowledge. So yes, the limitation is taken on. Eventually, the memory is not limited. And since there is no big or small in the existence, everything we say about the memory is meaningless. You remember the law of relativity, not the theory of relativity, law of relativity, which means everything exists in comparison to something else. Isn't it? <laughs> if we say that the universal memory is the biggest, it must be a relative statement, which is totally meaningless, isn't it? If you put another memory in front of it, it will become smaller than that. Why can, why can we put another memory before it? Because infinite possibility. So the law of relativity renders these kind of statements meaningless. This is bigger, that is better, that, this is more beautiful, that is ugly, you see. It's all relative statements. Hmm. So, what seemed like a simple question is actually a rabbit hole of possibilities. You can explore, you know, why do we choose to call something limited when it is simply a possibility. So, here is the question and answer for today. If anybody has any other questions, most welcome. Paramjeet has some comments. I am very happy that you got the benefit of the program, you got the benefit of the videos in the, our satsang, very happy. So you have a lot of potential and you will progress very nicely. Continue the program. And this, is, this must be the story of many people that everything changed for better and whatever they thought became worse is only purification. The unnecessary will be dropped. And that will look like you know something, some harm is happening. But no, the spiritual path will simply purify. Then the mind puts the labels, this happened and it was good, that happened, it was bad. We simply watch the mind in awareness. Sky is saying, I am doing the path of knowledge program and so far I have done few lessons. Existence's possibilities are experiences. So can we choose those possibilities and how? What are the limitations? What are limitations to that choosing? Yes, the choice means that there is an agency, there is somebody who does the 
analysis you know relative uh, advantages dis- disadvantages things and so on and that is called a person but uh, you will learn that there is no person it is an illusion so whatever this illusion does is also an illusion so whatever choices it is making is simply an illusion what is your essence the one that is witnessing all these all, all of this drama and it does not choose anything it simply accepts everything unconditionally whatever kind of experience is presented whatever appears simply witnessing so my suggestion is to continue on the program till you get to the chapter of self realization and oneness and all these questions will be answered why there is no person why everything is illusion you know progress up to at least chapter number 20 but the short answer that i have given is uh, sufficient for now try to investigate the reality of the person who is making choices and you will find nobody you will find only processes happening processes of decision making process of liking disliking depending on the past impressions like a program it runs and then there is a process that arises a thought arises and this is my choice this me and mine who says it can somebody answer me those who have progressed in the program who takes this responsibility of choosing something after the choice has happened anybody wants to answer yes paramjit is right ego when why is everybody else silent have you forgotten the lessons gram is saying the body mind no we are talking about a process there is a process that runs after everything has happened and it says it is mine it is required for survival the body mind is a machine it does not say anything the body mind is not an entity it is a collection of patterns vibrating patterns it is the ego the process of the ego the layer of the ego that activates after everything has happened and says it is my decision this is my choice there is nobody there so her question was so can we choose we means what you could have asked can i choose and what is the i here you need to know you need to define the i first and if i is the ego no that is an illusion if i is the experiencer then it does not do any kind of choice it is simply witness of all the illusory choices sky saying at some point ego is making a conscious choice to learn what you are teaching or being gravitated towards self realization that is what appears to be the case so ego is not making a choice ego is claiming that it is my choice that is the definition of ego the process that says i and me and mine the process that owns some events in the mind or the body in the world that is called ego so what is the meaning of conscious choice the choices are not conscious and the ego is not conscious it is simply an activity only you are conscious only the consciousness is conscious which does not do anything it is not the doer so it simply appears that the individual is doing something deciding something then decides to get the knowledge it is okay we can say like this but it is the relative truth from the absolute point of view it simply happened like this and then the claim was made i did this so since you are new we can give you some concession that okay you are doing it it was your choice very good choice now continue on your path if i tell you that there is nobody there to do anything then probably everything will stop so usually for new seekers this concession is given that look the truth is that there is no no doer there are no choices there is only illusion but for newcomers because they cannot understand this thing we say okay you choose because you you have the ability to choose you choose something good and progress do something that much can be allowed but as you progress you will drop all this i and me and mine they will be replaced by being that's all simply being my essence is simply being whatever happens here simply my own false appearance that's all is the knowledge this is the basic knowledge essential knowledge so till that happens you can continue choosing and what was the original question there can we choose those possibilities yes you can choose those possibilities if you want 
how to choose them that is called the intention make an intention that whatever is beneficial for me should happen if you don't know what to choose you can choose something which is general that whatever is most beneficial for me let that happen very simple make this intention very very strong and the choice will be made probably you are asking how to arrive at the correct choice this must be learned by experience the actions that are producing happiness and freedom they are good choices and the actions that are producing suffering and bondage not so good so follow the compass of happiness and you will see that this will lead to good choices check whether this choice is going to produce long term happiness long term freedom and that must be chosen so this is the answer at the relative level and the absolute level completely meaningless so this is something like the free will question many people ask this do i have free will and the immediate answer is if you are doubtful then probably you don't have it why are you asking <laughs> if you have it why are you trying to confirm it so uh, the answer that is given here is for the relative knowledge for the new comers is yes you have the free will now use it to will something good something beneficial for everyone something beautiful and that is you know the step forward for them if you simply tell them no there is no free will probably they will find some other path where there is free will so this business of lying is very common this is called incremental knowledge or i have called it the multi level knowledge as the student progresses bigger and bigger doses are given the bitter truth is told <laughs> in incrementally and then i told that you know path of knowledge is not multi level teaching the final thing is told in the beginning then you know that is a bomb blast and now you need to make sense of it why was this said what is the evidence for this and what are the means of knowledge what gives you the evidence now the whole you know process of the path of knowledge starts it's like a circle you start from the top then arrive at the top again this time with all the evidence verification so now you understand the presence of the first lesson in the program that gives you the complete knowledge in few words you know 5 minutes that's the complete knowledge but then why do i need the whole program because that is the process evidence gathering verification process so that is why i say in the beginning only that those who could understand what i just said in the first chapter they need not continue the program and who should do it those who are still asking those who still have some doubt about what was said now that doubt will be cleared step by step then you must be wondering why this madness you know why don't you go step by step this is the tradition this is how it is presented in all the scriptures thousands of years of teaching style is like this so i was very much impressed by this style because it evolved after many thousand years of teaching there is an advantage there going backwards so i tried to copy that probably it's not that perfect copy but still some effort was was made to go backwards in the 3d program we start from the bottom not from the top and some people find it very easy that way but on the path of knowledge program we start from the top and that is why it is difficult so those who have not done 3d so far they should do the 3d first probably that will help okay i think yaya has had some questions in the beginning but i can't find them now can you type them again can i ask a question outside the context of the program yes yes the satsang is not limited to program those who are not in the program they can also ask anything but it must be about some kind of spiritual stuff his question is actually what do i think about uh, this classification by somebody else now how can i comment about somebody else when i am not the student of that person but it is very good that you enjoyed that and you got some insights out of that so my recommendation is to continue reading listening but because i have not done it so it's kind of foreign thing to me sky is asking so does ego making any choices is called karma 
Yes, you can say that. You know, the karm means actions, and actions happen only when a choice is made. So we do not call it a choice. We call it a desire in traditional way. The desires appear, and the actions happen. That is what we say. And karma means that only. Strangely, there is no word in the scriptures or anywhere which is about choosing in the Advait philosophy. The Sanskrit word would be the nirnay, and it is never mentioned. That concept of making any choices is totally absent from this philosophy. So you will need to do this kind of you know manipulation of the words. Which word fits the words like choice? And the best word is will, and the will simply means desire, vasana. So yes, all the actions they arise from the will, and they result in some kind of experience, good or bad. That will be called your action. And the ego is held responsible. You do some kind of mistake, and who gets the punishment? <laughs> Usually, the body mind gets the punishment, not the ego. <laughs> the ego then later on says that I got punished. isn't it so it is totally fictitious entity there is no ego suppose you fail in the exam and your parents slap you who gets the punishment the body not the ego by mistake you put your hand in the fire burning candle whose action is this egos no but still it is an action and who gets the fruits the body then the ego says oh i got burned i got punished and then the whole story starts it was not my fault it was somebody else's fault <laughs> and the illusion then perpetuates like this like layers of the onion ultimately there is nothing inside so all illusion layers of illusions so probably right now you won't understand what i'm saying but the working definition of karma is that yes the actions made by the person or the ego actions done by a person it is very strange because this is our everyday experience you see there is a will to eat junk food and the body suffers and who takes the responsibility nobody <laughs> you see in that case the ego should say it was my decision it was my choice to eat that kind of food but it says no it happened it is the fault of the shopkeeper who gave me the stale food bad food so it's very tricky you see so this is usually seen in marriages it is their choice to marry and they say no my choice was correct but this person is very different from what i expected <laughs> so you see ultimately it's complete drama most of the time this thing which says i me mine remains intact doesn't nothing happens to it continues to do that but the body and mind suffers most of the time and not only that the body and mind is the one that enjoys the good fruits and the claim is again taken by the ego that oh i did this i did something good produced happiness achieved something there is you see a very good metaphor given by francis one of his talks that the ego is like the joker that takes the bow after the acrobat has done his show that is the ego those who have seen these circus shows or other shows the joker is the comedian and he fails at every performance that is his acting actually he makes people laugh but then he comes in the comes on the stage in the limelight and takes the bow that i am the one who did all the performance you see so this is a very good metaphor yes very accurate nothing is done by the ego still it is the one who claims i did it but yes the newcomers will never understand these things then i saying one day left hand spilled hot water on right leg right hand tried soothe leg felt burned but ego is saying i got burned i am suffering yes actions happen and the doer appears we all know why it appears because you know it's needed for survival it's needed for functioning in a society also probably the society is the one that reinforces the ego more because now there is a need to separate the individuals who did what the law and the system needs to know whom we should blame whom we should um, praise and that this whole society then enforces this wrong idea of there being a person probably the animals that live alone do not have that much 
of the ego because the ego arises by looking at other people then then similar concept similar imagination is made for the self just like others are doing their jobs others are willing and acting there is one here that is willing and acting see how beautiful this explanation is ego arose as a reaction to the society uh, as a survival mechanism evolutionary pressure to separate itself from the group so those who want to learn more about this psychology you see they can learn about this thing there was no ego in the beginning the humans did not have an ego this is the story <laughs> given in our scriptures indian scriptures and it was heavenly age then the ego said i said i am separate and <laughs> everything became hellish so what is self realization simply destruction of the ego you see you become that which you are and kick out this joker clown and you are again established in the bliss this is the whole self realization so now i remember that you know my, one of my gurus said that you have ego problem i said what i don't have that kind of problem i'm very polite person and so on but the correct meaning of this word was not told to me because you know i was also new could not understand anything so my guru said work on your ego kill it destroy it and then i said how <laughs> but i was never told how i was sent home go home you will never understand you know you are stupid that's what my guru used to say so i went home and i simply meditated contemplated on what is this tried to re- read about the ego and so on and finally got some clues that it is a survival mechanism that is coming in between you and y- real you you and your true nature this joker is standing in between so that is why it is called ego death self realization is also called the ego death and nothing to fear because nothing dies because nothing was there it is simply a realization that there is no person i am the universal not the personal this is self realization and yes the newcomers they struggle a lot just like i struggled then i told my guru after one month why didn't you simply tell me that i am the universal there is no ego and the answer was that you are stupid you won't understand these things <laughs> see if we simply tell somebody that you are universal thing you are the universe you are the brahman they will listen but they will not understand he is saying can we say ego is a conceptual fictional theoretical self we created by our own mind yes you see everything is like this not only ego everything is like this all experiences are illusory these words you see the big words they mean one thing imagination created by mind fictional theoretical concepts what do these words mean imaginary and what is the purpose for that you see survival so once you progress the ego is no more needed and we are freed from this limitation of being the individual you can achieve this right now right here thanks to the path of knowledge otherwise mother nature is actually taking you to the ego less state it happens every night also it's kind of useless state isn't it fully operating from the ego and fully knowing that it is a fiction it is imaginary is the correct way and nobody told me this also you know this, this path of knowledge can be very confusing you guys are so lucky you get all the pre cooked answers but i never got these answers directly so that is why there is questions and answers you see because i want to ensure that you you did not simply hear me you understood it that is why we have questions and answers that is why i keep asking people who can tell me what is this what is that and sometimes those who answer wrongly we need to pay more attention to these people mostly on the path of knowledge the gurus don't do anything you see they simply sit and wait for the question and the one who has more ignorance will ask more questions so obviously that is a automatic process and he is given the seeker is given tiny doses which do not give them answers they give them the method to discover the answer this happened to me many times but nobody has that kind of time nowadays isn't it it is a big deal that you are doing this program you see where everything is told directly and imagine if i played like this go and discover the ego yourself come after 2 months and find out who is looking 
come after one year and these are the means direct experience and logic i don't know what is logic okay study for 5 years come back you know this is the most most of the time this happens on the path of knowledge imagine nobody <laughs> nobody will know anything like this sky saying ramana maharshi said ask who am i answer is i am brahman intellectual understand it now what no, no, no there is no such thing as intellectual understanding direct experience and logic now that isn't it you heard it now find out why that is true how will you find out and there is your path of knowledge you see so you can see that ramana maharshi is doing exactly that he is not taking you step by step he is not doing any multi level teaching he is telling you directly now it is the job of the seeker to find out why that is true and if you cannot find out this path is useless and that is why in the program also you see i say that if you cannot verify the teachings leave the path leave the program leave the guru no hope that is how brutal this path is you see so you heard it listening is the first phase what is the guru saying now contemplate on it verify it and then abide as the brahman these are the steps on the path of knowledge i tried to you know replicate those steps in our path of knowledge program exactly like the tradition is however it is very funny that people think i am not traditional <laughs> where will you go tell me can you invent a better teaching method can you invent a better philosophy no it's all traditional simply changing the words and the language does not make it new simply putting it online does not make it new this is age old since the beginning of the universe this is how the guru teaches the student there is no better way so continue in the program all kinds of evidence is given there how to find out i am brahman everything is mentioned in clear detail and if you cannot understand we have the satsang unfortunately you cannot go to raman maharshi and ask th- this thing you know why did you say this <laughs> that is why there is the importance of a living guru not only living he must be approachable you should be able to talk to that guru you must be able to sit with that guru for one or two hours per week at least just like we are doing then these questions that this guru said this sa- said that and that guru said that are worthless because pay attention to what this guru is saying who is alive in front of you did you miss the teachings of the one who is talking to you where is your attention there are much better teachers but they are no more they are reduced to a book the book does not talk in satsang worthless talk to somebody who is alive living embodiment of the advait knowledge then there is some hope of progress if you are still trying to find the knowledge in the dead wood which is the book the strange symbols in the book which is the writing no hope pay attention to what is taught and it is simply showing it is not teaching really the whole program is showing we do not say we show on the path of knowledge how do we show simply by pointing the guru points the guru never tells you the knowledge so saying i am the brahman does nothing <laughs> useless and then i cannot cannot show you the brahman also you see so i can only point where is the problem why can't you see that which is in front of your eyes so i say don't look there look here that is all i do there are some who can take the pointing and some keep looking at my finger you look at your experience look at that place where the finger is pointing to that is the proper way to study on the path of knowledge look at your own experience and utilize your own critical thinking your own intelligence to check what was said and what is if you have a doubt you sh- you must ask if you do not ask you will never progress so now you understand my mistake when i went to my guru i never asked i only asked this much you see i demanded tell me this tell me that and the guru always said you will never understand you are stupid so it took many years for me to ask a proper question and the proper question was how to know that i am not any experience i am not any body i am not any thought or ego how how to know that and then, that day the guru smiled he did not call me stupid he said now you are ready <laughs> finally you asked something which is intelligent 
then he told we know everything by four means your experience logic scriptures and guru that was the end of path of knowledge isn't it end of path of knowledge because the guru and the scripture can be reduced to experience and logic and everything appeared simply for me actually i have done this kind of experiment with somebody i think i told in one of my satsangs that i did not tell who are you <laughs> i did not tell all this complicated philosophy i simply told the means of knowledge look this is the means of knowledge what can you find out right now without any biases after cleaning your slate what do you see and you know what happened that fellow came up with all the advait he was intelligent yes but anybody reasonably intelligent person given the means of knowledge will derive the whole advait in 5 minutes so as a homework some people can try that 3d program we take 3 hours it is actually 3 minutes knowing the truth can be so simple so easy so fast what is preventing you you are not asking the right question and the guru cannot say like this you know please ask me this thing that will be a very very comical artificial way to teach so the guru simply waits for the right time you see you are given one lie after another and then one day the right question comes that is the end but i have seen that there is more sense of achievement in that kind of technique if i tell you everything you are the brahman now go home then the value of that knowledge is not really grasped it is not appreciated that much yes i am the brahman now i have to go to the job tomorrow <laughs> i don't have money nobody respects me nobody loves me now what it will become just another trivial fact that you learn somewhere so the gurus are real geniuses they will make you realize who you are and then they will make you appreciate what you have what did you get this is the part of the guru training isn't it so why we are not doing like this we are doing that also you see and that happens later first the knowledge is given then we wait for the student to realize the value of that knowledge <laughs> because you know probably it will be trashed so we wait for the suffering to arise again and then the student comes back you told me i am bliss i am happiness i am this there is suffering okay do you realize what did you learn do you realize its importance is it that important for you that you are using it in your day to li- day to day life what do i need to use it also yes you were told about the awareness practice what happened no no i cannot do all these things you see i am very busy so you see nothing was understood nothing was appreciated if the knowledge has not become the most important thing in your life probably nothing was understood so that is called the seeding of knowledge which many people have heard it many times from my mouth seeding of knowledge we are interested in that we cannot force people to appreciate it we not force people into some kind of practice we seed it and they come back those who are ready they will come back and then the cultivation happens those who are not ready they go away they are lost somewhere but the seed will remain they will search search and they will find exactly the same knowledge everywhere they will probably realize that i wasted my time but nothing can be done so those who have made a spiritual life their top priority they are very lucky probably they are more lucky than those who simply heard it probably there are no more questions today so we'll end our satsang here and congratulations to paramjit all the best you will be surely successful and thank you everybody for attending to today's satsang i'll see you next time